A little while ago, the German website in Counter-Strike published an article I wrote about unreleased Counter-Strike maps. Since this article was written in German, I decided to release an English adaptation of it as a video. So here we go. Dust, Inferno, Nuke. Those are names of classic maps which were relevant almost 20 years ago and still are today. But what if those names were Damage, Silo or Rubble? Now one might think those are fairly generic map names, but so are Dust, Inferno and Nuke. The three unknown generic map names you have heard are names of maps that never got released officially. And today I want to give you an overview of all the unreleased Counter-Strike maps I could gather information on. Counter-Strike Global Offensive got a rather negative reputation when it comes to map variety. Recently a few new maps were added from the Mapcore contest, but let us not forget that classics like Aztec and Vertigo were removed. These maps had long surpassed their tenure as competitive maps, however they were good for loosening up deathmatch games and certainly got a lot of old veterans into a nostalgic mood. I always liked Aztec. I remember I scored my first headshot with a power on that map during a LAN party years ago. Now that the map pool got rather small and will stay that way for the foreseeable future, let us take a look at the maps that were lost on the way. Lost far earlier and not just cut recently. With that I don't even mean maps like Deep Prodigy, that made the jump from 1.6 to Source but failed the transition from Source to Global Offensive. I mean maps that were cut earlier, those which we mostly never saw. Let us start from the very beginning. During the betas, when Counter-Strike was still a Half-Life mod, several experimental maps which had concepts that didn't catch on existed. Maps like DE Fopchen, the only official map with three bomb sites, or CS Siege which got a drivable APC for a while. When Counter-Strike was officially released in 2000, the best maps were chosen. Many were removed and others massively changed. Did you know that Office used to have a massive blast door here? And here too? The Counter-Strike we know today as the basic Counter-Strike from Steam isn't what it was at launch, but it almost retained all the maps from back then, from the times of 1.5 and earlier. There are however two important maps that had to go, DE Vegas and AS Tundra. The latter one being a pretty frosty map for the nowadays rather unknown assassination game mode. Interesting side note, the Counter-Strike you can buy today in the Steam store is still being advertised with AS Tundra even though the map does not come with the vanilla version anymore. To quote another YouTuber, Valve, please fix. Let us jump to the year 2002. While the Counter-Strike community was waiting for the release of Counter-Strike 1.3, Gearbox Software was frantically working on over 20 new maps as part of the development of Counter-Strike Condition Zero. For this, they not only had their own developers working on the project, but also contracted outside help. Many of the mappers that got famous for maps like Dust2 and Inferno were asked to contribute maps. Of these maps created, only 5 would ever be officially released. The unreleased maps are as follows. AS Hangar, a VIP extraction on an airfield. Then we got CS Arctic Biolab, a Soviet bioweapons research center and the whole setting was inspired by John Carpenter's The Thing, great horror movie, it's worth a watch. Then we got CS Cold Storage. The whole thing took place in a rainy, weathered industrial district of New York, the so-called meatpacking district, I guess. A company called Gordolis operates a meatpacking plant and you have to free the hostages which are held in a huge freezer. CS Damage takes place in an Arab city destroyed by war, with hostages located in an underground bunker and something that could be a cafe. Then we got CS Desert Bunker, a map taking place in an underground facility underneath a city in the desert. CS Jungle Camp, as the name suggests, takes place in the jungle theme. It was reported that this map was inspired by the movie Predator, also a kind of cool inspiration for a Counter-Strike map. Then we also got CS Jungle Compound. This map is pretty unknown, we only got these two small screenshots. The next map is CS Radio. This one takes place in the second store of a huge office building inside a, well, radio station. Then we got CS Rooftop, a very interesting concept for a map as this map takes place mostly on top of buildings in a bigger city. Well, the name suggests so. But I've never seen a map quite like it. A very cool idea. CS Shoothouse was supposed to be an adaptation of an already existing custom map. This was supposed to become a training map for Condition Zero. CS Trailer Park, as the name suggests, was supposed to take place in a trailer park. And DE Bridge, like the name suggests, well, there was a huge bridge. 
And then the rest of the map was inspired by Venice. There were huge channels dominating the map design, similar to CSGO's canals. Then we got DE Canal. Unlike Valve's DE Canals, this map was not located in Venice. This was supposed to be a construction site at a sewage canal, so rather different. Next up we got DE Dahab, or Dahab, I, I'm not sure how to pronounce it correctly. Just like Dust, this map was supposed to take place in an Arab village. Then we got DE Genosurf. This map was special as there were supposed to be two usable elevators. That would have made the map something rather special since interactive elements mostly disappeared from Counter-Strike maps nowadays. Now, as I was working on the video, I noticed something. I have missed a map that is on none of the official map lists, but is in this old issue of PC Games from 2000 and... Jesus, blurry. From 2002. By the way, back then the cover had the second guy in a green uniform. So, let's um, take a look at this, because there's this tiny blurry thingy in this magazine is the only official picture of this map that ever got released. Uh, where is, ah, there we go. Yeah, once again, you can see it a bit bigger. Guy in the green uniform. It's on the second page. It is. So I'm starting to get in. DE construction with the very blurry, very small image. Nothing much to be seen here. This is the only official image of this map ever released, and um, the well, the writing just says they they are still working on this map, and uh, they can't say anything about it. Same goes for Dahab, back then when this was released, but we have images of Dahab, courtesy of the creator. And then we got this map up here. This map was never meant to be released as a joke map, but Gearbox accidentally included. Well, this one apparently got taken out as well, but was a real project. So yeah, we got this map, the construction. Oh, and just for the sake of mentioning it, there's also CS range. However, this was to be a tutorial map and not a real multiplayer map. Nonetheless, they called it CS. Now a personal favorite of mine, DE Hankagai. A modern Japanese inner city area located near a shopping center. PC Games magazines called it the most beautiful Counter-Strike map back then. And we are staying in Japan with DE Otaku. This map takes place in a Japanese nuclear reprocessing plant. Also a pretty cool theme. Then we have DE Penal. Though, mm, it's supposed to be CS Penal, I kind of mixed it up. This takes place in a prison block taken over by terrorists. Next up we got DE Pipeline, taking place at a Russian pumping station for an oil pipeline. Pretty cool theme as well. Then we got DE Silo and we are staying in Russia. This takes place in a Soviet ICBM silo. Then we got DE Terminal, this was going to be a modern bus terminal. And DE Vessel, this map located entirely on board a research vessel in the Arctic region. Also visually a very cool idea. If some of these maps looked strangely familiar to you, then you might have played Counter-Strike Condition Zero Deleted Scenes. When Ritual Entertainment took over the development of Counter-Strike Condition Zero, they used several maps made by Gearbox Software to create linear single-player levels out of them. Other remains are hidden in plain sight. Have you played Counter-Strike Condition Zero or 1.6 with the HD pack enabled? then you might have seen this selection icon for the GSG-9. What you likely didn't know is that it shows the operative on the cut map DE Canal. Ritual Entertainment themselves not only repurposed some of the Gearbox maps, but also produced their own. Amongst them we find AS Death Town, a assassination map in the style of Dust 2, DE City of Sin, a more or less unfinished looking map located in a devastated city, DE Quarry, and like the name suggests, this takes place in a quarry, and this map was later heavily modified and released as a custom map. And the last one is DE Rubble. As you can guess by the name, this map was supposed to be, well, rubble. Lot of, lot of rubble. After Condition Zero changed developers again in 2004, Turtle Rock Studios, the new developers responsible for finally finishing the game, decided to merely upgrade classic Counter-Strike maps visually and included very few of the maps created by Gearbox. However, these were largely scaled down in actual map size and level of detail. 
What you are seeing right here is a panorama view of the second bombsite of Die Eva Stock. In the final version, the bombsite was simplified and now looks like this. While Turtle Rock Studios was working on Condition Zero, Counter-Strike Source was in development at the same time. For that reason, Counter-Strike Condition Zero only received a minimum of attention. From the development time of Counter-Strike Source, we only have very little cut content. Except for a few test maps like the Source version of the 1.6 style Dust 2. Other than that, we have no dropped map projects. But when we take a look at Global Offensive, things are getting a bit more interesting again. From the CSGO beta phase, we know of several maps that were cut, some of which we even got screenshots for. DE Alleyway, a demolition map based on the very first section of the No Mercy Hospital campaign from Left 4 Dead. DE Depot, another demolition map cut from the game, this one with a very interesting theme. And a peculiar thing, this map was mentioned in the game files back in February of 2018. Also, one of the props has been reused in Overpass. This rocket engine. And the next map I personally find pretty interesting, DE Balcon. This was supposed to become a remake of DE Vostok, known from Condition Zero. Several screenshots and leaked assets of this map are available. Most of the lost maps of Counter-Strike Global Offensive come from the Alpha and Beta phase from around 2011. This is the case with Balcon and Depot. The interesting thing about the Balcon map is not only that it is supposed to be a remake of the old Condition Zero map, but it appears to be a remake of the unreleased Gearbox version of the map built by Mark Schröder back in 2001. Some of you might know him as the creator of the popular Half-Life single-player mod Poke 646. More unreleased maps are only known by references in the game code, like AR Barloni, DE Glass, DE Embassy and Park. A map of which we don't even know the scenario. From maps like Embassy we have a few leaked items, like a skybox texture and several unused props which suggest that the map was an EU embassy in Great Britain. Earlier maps like DE Alleyway, which are based on Left 4 Dead levels, are most likely the work of Turtle Rock Studios, when they were still in charge of developing a Counter-Strike Source sequel, before Hidden Path Entertainment took over the development. Certainly, there are more unreleased maps and drop map ideas out there, like the map Survival Island for the still unreleased survival game mode. Of this map we only know due to a reference in a sound file. And because of this, this article or video does not make the claim to be absolutely complete, so the list may expand in the future. And in case I do come across more maps, you will be informed. So I hope you enjoyed this overview of all the unreleased Counter-Strike maps. Thank you for watching and a special thanks to the loyal supporters on Patreon, who of course got to see this video first and will be the first ones to get access to the newest map recreations. In case you understand German, I suggest you take a look at In Counter Strike DE, where my article was originally released. They are friends of mine and cover all of the latest developments about Counter Strike in German. If you'd like to stay up to date with what I do and what I work on besides videos, go follow the Escalation Twitter account. It is also the best way to contact me if you so desire. See you guys next time. Till then, have a nice day and as always, goodbye and guten Tag.